All right. That's yeah, that's fine. Just yeah. to keep it nondescript. Yeah. Okay, so we're recording. So we've just uh, we're doing um, the minister that? Zoom regarding uh, signing a business into uh, the ULC trust and being able to facilitate then kindness credits as a currency um, over the counter. So in this instance, we've already left a kindness credit note at the point of sale and exchanged that for uh, organic food. And the company then um, contacted us and said, we'd like to convert this kindness credit note into some of it back into slave tokens. And we'd like to save some of it into kindness credits. So that was done over the phone. And um, now obviously they've seen how that step works. Uh, the company would like to know how to use the accounts credit exchange and trust surety services to be able to discharge the electricity charges. So we just started to talk about what it is that we need in order for any business to do this, which is the electricity account number, work out on account as credit claim form with uh, the business or the business do it for itself, um, how much it is um, the overheads are for electricity, gas, water, and baits. Um, do one for the business and also do one for your own private outgoings as well, because obviously what we're trying to exemplify to people is by using these kinds of credit notes and this structure, your energy covers uh, all of your liabilities. So you don't have to put like a slave to pay the charges for operating your private affairs as a corporate business with a legal fiction. So by uh, sending over a simple email with just assignment of consent forward slash authority to act, see if the website doesn't work, to the kindness credits at protonmail.com, put in the, the company uh, name, registration number if it's got, um, and the legal fiction that you've been using to create that company name with and the account number for the accounts that you want us to discharge. So we're going to start with a nice simple one. Um, it's with EDF. And what's actually happening is when you obviously you get your legal fiction and you create another legal fiction as a company, and then you're actually granting your equitable shares to the legal fiction who then on the authority to act that you've given the attorney general by using their legal fiction to do this with, they can sell the equitable rights to their legal fictions and then their legal fiction sell your legal fiction the shares back. So that means that your electricity comes on. So it's big fraud, big money laundering. And what you're doing is you're uh, realizing coming to this point of realization and saying I realize that I don't actually have to do that now because all of those costs all of that that every time that uh, liability is actually getting laundered and compounded um, the uh, slavery system obviously it's taking our energy and those costs are passed back to our customers so that's why organic food and natural food is so expensive um, because of all of these charges and, and duties that uh, so were actually being penalised for eating healthy food, while across in the GMO supermarket, you know, it's, it's very, you can kill yourself in a fiver. Um, so <laughs> the sending those over, what happens then is we will contact, it gives us the authority to act. So the document, the assignment of consent, as says that all the liabilities are to be passed to Minister England. So we can forward that to the company. The company is then notified that it hasn't got an assignment of consent on an authority to act because that legal fiction, EDF for example, company's house as a legal fiction is a uh, register of legal fictions and all the legal fictions inside it is also secured as collateral as uh, inside the filing against Her Majesty's government. So what that means is that all of the equity 
has been assigned. So now we're back to the electricity. Did you grant the right of use to EDF your share that used to back the birth certificate represented by the legal fiction, your right of use? No, you didn't. Nobody asked you. And so what actually happens is you go back to universal, it's, they actually call it this in Greece, it's Catholic supply, universal supply, and it's back to the national grid. You have taken away all of those um, administrators inside you just turning on your light. So you've stopped the profiteering from um, your yeah, We had a leaflet through the door the other day for National Grid, mm. and it clearly says in the leaflet that they only, they only charge 30p a day per connection. Yeah. That, 30p that's, a day. Exactly. Yeah, we're, paying, they, we're paying 30 pounds a day. Mm. I, this is a real business. Yeah, them to we'll send a bill. Admin. The administration yeah. fee is it's like good. parasite entities working between everyone, basically <laughs> siphoning <laughs> energy. So. Literally, and and yeah. they call you, you know, you, you call you a revolving credit facility in their system or a utility transmitting account because we're like, I need to go turn my light on. Bleep bleep bleep! I've just funded ten terrorist corporations. No, you know, don't people just they, they're not bothered, they don't think about that. I just want their lights to come on. So, you know, yeah. they've come to us and said, Well, you don't need to worry about where the electricity comes from, where your water comes from. And we talked about that before, but you know, um, now we're paying for them to actually terrorize it with us uh, through accessing our resources, they're toxic. So, not only are we paying for something that we should never have been paying for anyway, it should have all been coming out of the profits of the dividends that these companies and your government was supposed to have been creating in their game of commerce to discharge those charges on your behalf as the beneficiary so that you lived a liability free life while this game of commerce was committed upon your shares and not, none of the private and the public was never to meet and now it, the, the public is private and we privatise the public services and the people who are the public have become private corporations and they've you know this is why people are like oh how the hell did we end up like this well, through massive fraud and, and deception really um, and now 1984 there's there's um, like PDF documents that show conservative MPs where they sold off the um, like electric and gas assets right. undervalued. Yeah. So the taxpayers' money paid for all of the infrastructure to go in. Then they sold it below value. And then it was all like conservative MPs that are all like the shareholders of the oh, wow. now newly formed corporations. I remember my dad going mad because the rates that, that this huge house that we lived in had gone up to, it was about seven pounds a year or something like that, or 70 pence a year. And and he, I remember him kicking off because it was like, you know, that's supposed to be, I knew, you know, my dad knew this stuff. Um, so, you know, this is my, it's supposed to be operating my share of this planet like this. Um, and this is what I've got to pay 70 pence or 70 pounds a year for, you know, for something. So, because if you think about how many there are of us all, um, and if we only put one time, you know, one pound in a pot, so that's what we've been doing. I'm saying to the communities and the, the people who have discharged liabilities, put 10% of what you saved in a pot for your community and go to there if you need your road fixing, go if you need a fire engine, because if you've got 77 million of us or 80 million or whatever there is in now in England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales together, and you all put that in as if there wasn't some parasite with their fingers in it first, there, there would be no debt, there would be no, you know, none of this homelessness and people without, um, you know, because a little bit of energy shared out and not parasited and siphoned off like you just said, it goes a long way. So um, this is why by helping these businesses like yourselves now, you can turn around and say, okay, the, the customer comes to the counter in exactly the same way. And now, 
you don't, you've immediately your prices are cheaper because you can knock off your electricity bill or your debt that you've got going on. I mean, we slowly work through it. So if the saving, let's say, is three and a half thousand a year, um, it's not just that immediately that you've assigned the um, registration number of the business. It's the tax as well that you can immediately now uh, account for any transactions in a tax-free currency. So any uh, exchange, so th let's just start with one column. So we've put in this column, the 3,500 electricity. I can knock three and a half grand now off my overall charges for my box of food. So well, off the tomato, whatever it is, the percentage that I've had to incorporate on the tomato, uh, for the covering of that liability that I've now discharged, it's gone. Okay, so immediately I'm cheaper. What our goal is, my goal is to bring the, uh, all of our goal is to collectively is, is to bring down the price of slavery for accessing organic and natural food and make that the standard that, you know, and, and tax the other, uh, the plastic crap that's killing people instead and make it so unaffordable for people that they have, you know, it's not about organic or not. One's food, one's not. You, this is what you need to be now investing. So you brought your community now into being able to be the investors in what it is that's going to heal them instead of harm them. Because they've, first of all, they've got the outlet. You're there. You've an outlet for it. You're a facilitator of this. They come into your shop and and come to the counter with their stuff, thinking, "Well, I might have to put that back." Some people, um, and you know, concerned that they've got, I've got enough money in my bank card for this, and uh, and buyers remorse and all of that. Instead, they come to your counter, and you say, "Right, if you pay me with slave tokens, it would be this price." What? Well, if we if we do this transaction using the usual way which is the Visa card or the cash that's got Bank of England on them. I've got to pay tax. You've got to pay tax. We've got to pay for the right to use this. You've got to wear a mask to come in here because of the undisclosed contract that I and you have entered into by using this piece of paper. Um, and so we've all got to perform in this way because we've all assigned our consent or implied our consent that we're playing this definition of commerce so that's why this box of food is really expensive so we've got people going into shops and now and saying that I'm, I'm only here because of kindness credits I won't be able to come in normally and shop in your shop because I only get 600 slave tokens a month in my benefits and, and it's just enough to give me 50 quid a week after I've paid all of these liabilities out to these private corporations trespassing on my shares but anyway and I'm left with 50 quid a week. I have to go to the GMO supermarket. But instead, because I discharged all of that, I, and I put 60 quid a month into my community pot, I've got 540 now in my pocket. I can come and invest in your lovely little business now. That, and so I'm not supporting slavery, I'm not paying the tax, and you've brought each customer out. So they're there standing at the counter. And you say, look, I'm going to show you how this works. This products all of these products are a hundred pounds with if you pay me with pounds but if you put 80 pounds on the counter there instead and, the, and I, I'm going to do a money exchange with you so I uh, the uh what my kindness credit no <clears throat> and I write 10 kindness credits on there and I swap the 80 slave tokens for 10 kindness credits and the, then You've got the slave tokens, haven't you? But it was as a money exchange. Now, at the point of sale, you're going to say to him, so before you do the point of exchange, uh, at the point of sale, you've done a point of exchange. So you've exchanged the slave tokens for your kindness credits. Then you say, no, you want those things in that basket? Yes, I do. Okay, it's 10 kindness credits, please. And they give you the 10 kindness credits and you write a receipt. All of those things, you can even scan them through your till exactly the same way. And all you do is you have, let's say I've had to pay a supplier 10,000 pounds this month for the products. 
at 10, let's do 80,000, it's easy for my mind today, 8,000 uh, uh, pounds worth of products from all of these different suppliers. And, but my currency in my shop now is my private currency, it's pounds credits. I have to convert into the local currency that the suppliers in, slave tokens. And I can do that because I've collected the slave tokens from the other people who've converted their energy into slave tokens. It's like coming to another country, you have to change your money. Only there's not some fat cat sitting there going, oh, I'll make a killing on your exchange here. It's just like for life, it's completely tax free and it's you doing it. So you then give the, uh, you have a kindness credit uh, claim form yourself. And you fill that out. So if my products, all of my products this month were 8,000, I put in my ledger book, in my accounting book, uh, products, uh, 1,000 kindness credits. And, in, and I can buy in brackets 8,000 slave tokens. And it's just like you're doing international trade. If you, if you buy something from another country, it, the, the cash that comes out of the slave token holding the wall is in their local currency. You might have changed your energy into pounds, but and then I've gone and bought something in, from Japan and I've paid them in their local currency. I, there was a, a belief in our mechanism somewhere that something real happened. It didn't, numbers on the screen just went from one column to another column. This way, it means that you don't need as many numbers on your screen, anybody, to be able to access these resources. You as a business then are fully accountable uh, for, you know, if they want to come in, you don't need a license anymore uh, to do any of these things because you are no longer in their definition of commerce. They can't come and tell you, you've got to shut your shop. The suppliers, okay, some of these suppliers are going to be large corporations. It doesn't make any difference to them. They're still getting it in slave tokens. It's up to them if they want to turn their business and if they want to take that and, and that transaction. What do you do if they try and investigate you then? It doesn't matter, does it? What have I done? Nothing. It's crazy. No. It's legal. It's commerce. No. This is what with all of these things, Tina, that I've been you know, teaching people. It is, it, this is why we can do it because they wrote this code. Well, they so you're a, saying that they're already using it in other remits. We just don't know about it. Well, it's it's it, it's the uh, well, you've heard of Tottenham's pound, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, they did it there. There's a Bradbury pound. So there's a whole island here that's that there's Bristol it, pounds, but it's still. Um, still attached to sterling yeah, it is attached to sterling and that's why they still got to pay tax on it this way and i told you before um obviously this here in greece it's really really difficult it's not like england it's just open business hurt right okay i'm a health food provider or uh i'm a an airbnb or whatever i'm i it, you have to have a license you have to have at least five thousand slave tokens in the bank for them to be able to for them to open your legal fiction and create another one with um you you have to jump through some real bureaucracy um and the so when i opened the shop i you know that was it I opened the shop and the police are coming and they're screaming and all that is well documented on other zooms and I just said, you know, I, what, what do I need a license for? Where's your papers? What for what? Well, you've opened a shop, define shop. You're selling things, define sell. You're taking money, define money. Euros, well, I have to stop you there because I don't use your dirty, filthy slave tokens in my transactions. I haven't got a contract with you. Now, mm. if you don't, F off. Right now is what I said to them. I'm gonna arrest you for trespass. And away they went. Yeah. <laughs> now they, they 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 came again with a different uh, department of the private corporate state, um, which was the FREA, which is a tax. And they, they wouldn't even come into the garden and the stand on the side where I put my customers off. So I just went over and just said, "Do you want to speak to me?" And and they said, Do, "Even if you're doing rocks, even if you're doing swapping honey for rocks, because that's what the." It's the police have gone back and said that she's she's selling rocks and then 
selling the rocks for the honey is what they said. So they said even it, the value, we're going to put the value on the honey. I said, you can't put a value on it. It's the value that I put on it or the person that I'm doing the exchange with. It's nothing to do with you. If I want to exchange a tin of honey for a rock, then I'm quite happy to show you my books. I've, I've exchanged 10,000 cups of coffee this week, this month, this year. How many rocks do you want? No, we, we, that was it. We were like, ding, because it's whatever I and my community accepts as legal tender. Not you. You don't. It, it, this is the problem that we've got. We have allowed ourselves to be dictated to by a bunch of terrorists saying, "This is your money, boys and girls. This is, you know, as we get grow up or don't stay seven. Uh, you know, this is your. This is how you do it. You grow up to be a good Vatican debt slave." pay for everything and your next generation will inherit all of your debt that you created that we didn't discharge that it doesn't really exist until we created this system of commerce without the system of commerce you've got direct access to resources we would all get together and say right guys who wants to deal with the water who wants to uh, you know deal with the food who wants to deal with the energy creation we're already doing all of this but we're doing it with a legal fiction, giving away our rights, and then buying them back as privilege. Well, pff, we don't need to do that. And so this system's taught us very well how not to do it, but also how they do it. So if it's not legal, like you just said, what if they investigate you? Our van went all the way across Greece, full of products, and went to England, and it's got, got to France, all the way, it's waved through and all that, gets to France, England, like that. Yeah, don't let it in, don't let it in. Look for something, there must be some reason. They are, this is how much, what have they got in there? A few thousand litres of olive oil, honey, uh, products. The um, How much tax? What did you pay for it? The guy standing there is, but it's kind of credit claim form, that this, this is private property. It's like my, if I put my clothes into the, from the wardrobe into my suitcase and put it in my van and take it, it's only commerce if I'm going to go on and sell that. It's, but at no point were we ever going to be in the definition of sell because the paperwork said that this was exchange for rocks. So with the French police, are like the customs there, are like uh, they've got documents that say that all of this is, it's, but private property, and if there was any commerce, it would be done in kindness credits. What's a kindness credit? Yeah. So how many kindness credits? Was, how many rocks you want? And so they made the guy late. They, he, he missed the thing. He, they ripped everything out of the van. They dick tested everything. And, and they said that they could smell cannabis. Oh. So they ripped out all the sides. They put it all back together again, but it made him an hour late for the for the boat, so they reimbursed his ticket for him and sent him on his way, gave him an escort to the next harbour so he could get on the boat and that was it. Oh. So, and you know, we, we, we've we done this. It's not like people can say, no, this can't work. It, 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 yeah. You know? So um, as we work through this, these very easy steps, the price of your products will come down, the, the, the amount of slavery that you have to do, you get your life back, which is what the most important part is. It, you know, to be with your children, uh, to live a happy um, existence and not have to think, oh my God, somebody's gonna come and steal something off me. Yeah. Um, we and can do this. What that thing you were talking about that you could embed into the website so that um, if anyone paid online, yeah, um, Lisa's done this. Kindness, kindness credits. Lisa's done it. Um, it's a it's a widget, a, a plugin. She's made a plugin, or there is a plugin that she's added on to something, and she's put it onto her website. And now, when you go, it gives you both currencies. It gives you your the currency that you would normally be shopping in anywhere, wherever you are in the world, yes. according to your own Wi-Fi address. Apparently, this is how it works. Um, and then the uh if let's say again i want to it's just i want to i want that and that and that and that and it's this much in slave tokens and and this much in but you can't pay us in slave tokens you have to convert that amount of slave tokens into this amount of kindness credits and so it actually converts it divides it by by eight 
And so they can see like what, how many slave tokens it is, and it's eight slave tokens, one kind of credit. Mm. And so it converts it. And so at the front end, it creates a receipt it's a, for, the, uh, for the money exchange. So you're exchanging, what, it's an energy exchange. I'm exchanging my energy that was trapped behind the slave token into a tax-free currency, which means that I keep 25% of it. It's 23% here, 17, 18%, I think, every week with you, depending on what you buy. And, um, and so you're keeping that amount of energy, first of all. The business then is keeping the amount of energy that it would have had to expel on that transaction to account for. Um, and so just by doing that one little thing with this widget, with this uh, plug-in thing, there's the, uh, nearly 50% saved in somebody's energy. And then can that link up to what, like a Stripe account or something like that, it, where it goes straight in or? It just go, it just, it uses the account that you've already got on the background to take the money. So let's say I haven't got a widget and, right. I, and I do online, uh, let's, I, I want to buy something online, I put in my card number and it's whatever the website's got to set up. It might be Stripe, right. it might be whatever. whatever this yeah. widget works at the front end so that it converts the, uh, it converts the amount tax free into kindness credits. And so you're actually buying kindness credits. You like the, the policeman said, she's selling rocks. You first, what you're doing is you're buying the rocks and then you use it. So you've converted your energy from backing the slave token to backing the rock now, and then you're giving the rock. That's probably the easiest way that I can explain it. But the, 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 uh fiat currency accounts so they put in there uh, you buy the rock and then you pay with the rock so it's like a currency conversion within the transaction and then you pay with that new currency with the rocks, yeah yeah in oh. simplistic terms yeah. yeah yeah so it's very easy to do there's a video on um on the youtube uh, which shows just the, the beach bar guides down here doing it um and he's he couldn't even be bothered. I said, look, do, do uh, 0.5 of the kindness credit and one kindness credit, um, 1.5. And so, it, and you've got a collection then. So there's 16, if, okay, well, so this is a bit of fun that we do. If there is eight slave tokens in one kindness credit and there is 16 kinds of kindness yeah. in one kindness credit, then how much is each kind worth? Uh, 50p. You, you know the answer to that. Yeah. You did it at the training. So yeah, and also I did it up at the, um, at the big mansion house as well with the, in the kitchen. Yeah, they told me. That you Show been, everyone, yeah. It was a bit intense, <laughs> but it was oh, fine. Man. Everyone got it by the end of it. So. They said, yeah, it was. And, and yeah. this is it. It just takes somebody to do that. To, it's like going to the casino or, you know, like we talked about buying a, a gift card, for example, from Marks and Spencer's. Go in there, you give 10 slave tokens. What did you do? It's your sweat equity. What energy it took for me to create that 10 slave tokens. I'm swapping my energy for that, for that scarf, really, but I don't want to buy the scarf in case my mum don't like it. So I'm going to buy this bit of plastic, the rock, and I'm going to give that to my mum instead. I'm going to say, right, go in that shop there. She can only go to Marks and Spencer's, so they've got her anyway. But when she goes back in and exchanges the piece of plastic for the scarf, it's tax free. It's Marks and Spencer's credit that the they no, that either. Or pardon? And do they still get charged that or not? They, they corporate tax rebates. They have people like me working for them, paying them huge amounts of money, so they don't have to pay corporate tax. Yeah. So, you know, this is just one of their things. The, the, the next thing, obviously, is tax saving. What you, what you have created there for everybody in your town, village, city is a, a tax haven. And so now they could come in uh, into some of these places that we've opened up and the, you've got somebody sitting there. Uh, they just come to your shop as normal and they come to the counter and suddenly you're going to blow their mind. And they're going to want to know how can I convert my? I, have you just? Are you telling me that I've just kept my tax and and it's a clean transaction? It's not black money. Yes. How can I do it? I've got a business, or I've got loads of debt, or um, I just want to save myself twenty five percent, or whatever the tax is in your country, um, from the system. So 
And the more businesses, obviously, that we help get their heads around this, uh, the better, obviously, because it stands down the COVID scam. You're not in commerce, so you're not obliged to perform the, with the legislation, acts and statutes that's applicable to that private corporation because the contracts are severed. For uh, that to be the case, would you have to be 100% trading um, in this way? You no, but what we no, you can't. I don't think any business can one hundred percent trade in this way immediately yeah. because there is that transition point. We're finding it ourselves. You know, um, we've had to say to people put ten percent in because they're just not getting it. There's suddenly they've got all of that slave token energy back, and they're just going going where they didn't have six hundred pound a month before. Suddenly, the corporations have got six hundred pound a month. Uh, times 10 to the power of 10 if invested in other corporate companies that they represent just not the electricity and gas they've just taken it and put it into the system in, a, in another plastic way corporate state way by investing in plastic shit and GMO yeah. food so oh you're back sorry you were frozen we, then we missed about 20 seconds there I reckon yeah okay, so I, I was just saying about the the, te the that's why we said to people about 10 percent because the, even yeah. when people get that energy back they, they're like i don't know what to do that i haven't got a shop that i could go to to invest my clients credits in because why because they don't bother to tell anybody oh, i can't tell anybody because they'll think i'm stupid if i offer you a rock they think you're stupid not to I, you know, if we, we've got a solution that was already in place for God knows how many thousands of years before now, and it's only been 2,000 years since the Romans took us over in our hearts and minds and souls and, that we used this slavery system. But before that, it was barter, it was rocks, it was, you know, about 25 kilometres from where I am. There's the banks that are 10,000 years old banks that used rocks, different kind of mineral rocks coming from different kinds of places across a ladder, across this rock of light. And here we are doing it again. So it's not people go, you know, will it, uh, will it work? You're doing it anyway, but you just use a piece of paper. You haven't got the right of use of whether that's your name, whether that's your company name, whether that's the Bank of England promissory note, whether it's your visa card, you're in fraud. So, so, so can I ask, for, for example, we've got a credit card, which we've had to use for cash flow. Um, you know, that's about four thousand um, pounds down at the moment. Right. So is there a way to use this for that? Because, you know, as you say, debt yes. is all account pre accounted for anywhere and there is no debt. So I'm just trying to get my head around that because that's the other element um, I'd like to look at as well. Yeah, that's the what we what we really need to do is uh, do the private side from the private side as well for you, um, yeah. because the, don't forget what we said at the beginning It's two legal fictions. It's the legal fiction that you can use as your name, then created the company. So yeah. if they feel that they can create a joinder with a liability holder other than us somewhere. In, in other words, if somebody is still connected to either that legal fiction that's connected to that legal fiction, to the yeah. company name with the legal fiction name, um, then they're going to feel, well, they're going to come to the door, they're going to, you know, uh, the, what they have to do is a risk assessment. And the first thing that they do is they check all of this data that, that we've kind of given them, disclosure, disclosure, census here, oh, I'm, you know, going to the toilet, let me tell you, uh, when I'm going and what toilet paper I use because you're taking all the information when I go to the shop. So by us stopping that, we're not we're standing under non-disclosure. We have got no contract with you, so don't expect me to make one. The liabilities that I've been creating up until the point that I realized that I was actually in fraud is my job as an individual to settle them. I can no longer turn around and look for somebody else to do it for me. I have to show due diligence, which exemplifies my legal majority being reached. Once I can exemplify my legal majority being reached, then I, it just by my being in that state, rebuts the corporate state's presumption that you need a governor, a government. So you just, by you learning these steps, you're destroying the standing that they had in your mind really is, really what's going on. You do the thing where you like contact the credit card company and yeah. offer, yeah. offer like 10% settlement figure or something like that. 
The or... credit card, the, that's, no, that's with a mortgage. So with the mortgage, what we do is we uh, accept the right of use. So your right of use has got a value. It's not the title that has the value, it's the right of use, it's the possession of the right of use that has the legal value that in their definition. The, and it is, it's your right to shelter really, which is what you are going on. Okay, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna commit commerce with my rights. Here's my right to shelter. Here's my right to travel. Here's my right to use my electricity on the shop. Um, and so that's uh, what the uh, mortgage companies get um, is you saying, right, okay, I recognize my role in this. I know my right of use has got value. I know that there's a debt owed to me and my people in my community uh, by uh, Majesty's Government, Royal Bank of Scotland, HSBC, um, JP Morgan, uh, all of them. I've been trespassing on your rights um, and they've got accounts that they've been invoiced that created this debt of 10 quadrillion. You know about this debt because you've been informed, look guys, you used to be an unsecured creditor of Her Majesty's Government because you used to pay tax you used to buy all of your products from them. You used to grant your shares to them. You were the creditor of that corporation. Whether you knew that or not, now you do. And you were unsecured in your standing because you didn't know. And now you're secured. What, how am I secured? Because you know, I'm secured in the mind now. Now, what am I going to do about it? So I have to discharge the liabilities that these private corporations didn't do. So that takes us into the discharging part. You're taking what you have got, which is your equitable rights, back now in your own hands and because you've stopped giving them away or being presumed to give them away. Most people didn't even know they got them to give them away anyway. Now you've got them. Now you know, actually, this is what they were. What am I going to do with them? I'm going to use their system. to. I'm going to discharge the commercial system as a whole. So it never exists again in my life. How do I do that? I use the right of use because I acknowledge I've only got the right of use for something. I can't own anything. And that's why this Schwab's come, guy come along to scare you all to say, you're going to own nothing and, uh, mm. and be happy. You already own nothing and you're bloody miserable because you've been taught to believe that you do. So you fear a loss immediately. Somebody's going to come and take it off me and they can play their game of somebody's coming to take it off you. You have to pay us to stop them when it's actually them who are coming to steal your rights because you gave them away. You're actually being penalising yourself for operating and supporting the slavery system. That's why you are going to pay. So what happens if you, so, so you discharge that, you offset some liabilities and- The way it is set with the mortgage. So you take your right abuse of the, more, of, of the property and it's got a value of 250 grand, let's say, and you take that and you come to your trust and you say, I'd like to discharge 250,000 slave tokens worth of kindness credits off this account is my, this mortgage company which was registered through Her Majesty's government that created this debt that I know that you hold against these corporations. So I'm coming as the official receiver, I'm receiving my own debt and I'm discharging it through this structure that I've now got access to that I don't have to pay 80 grand a year. So I would never be able to access this information to somebody and I've got it four or five hours a week. So I'm giving that there and to the equivalent of the official receivers. So just to pause you there, we lost you for about 10 yeah, seconds. Yeah, they, so. they're doing this and I wonder if it's going to come out. Really <laughs> just at the right, you know, the really yeah. key bits you? of information. <laughs> so, so, so just to rewind it to um, the 250,000. Right. Yeah. yeah. So 250,000. So the, yeah. the right of use got the value of 250,000. That's what they've valued it at um, on wow. Zoopla. And I'm taking that amount i'm coming to I'm, a, I'm acting as the official receiver of my own liabilities now if i'd have carried on paying that i would have credited this corporate state and terrorism to the power of 250 grand to the power of 10 to the power of 10 i'm not going to do that i'm retiring from credit in that fraud and i'm discharged i know that the universal law community trust and my community have, are owed 10 quadrillion by this company and all their agents thereof so I'm coming to them and I'm saying, look, I've got this right of use. I'm peacefully surrendering the collateral that used to be inside that legal fiction account 
to universal law. So I'm back in alignment with my creator. I'm not claiming anything. I've got the right of use, right? Give me back the right of use without any liabilities. I need to document, not that title deed, because it gives me all the liabilities and, and it leaves me uh, the tenant in my own life. I need a document that says right of use for perpetuity and a receipt to say that this is what you did. You took my right of use, you gave it a value, 250 grand, you applied 250 grand to against the charges that were outstanding in the accounts from HM government knowledge and thereof. And you get a big blue asset management adjustment of account showing that 250 grand being accounted for in our ledgers offsetting 250,000 off their debt. You now are what? You are now the secured party creditor once more like you always should have been to Her Majesty's government. Instead of them? Instead of them having you pretend that you were the debtor, you were always the creditor. You were and they will do this. If, 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 you, if you go through this process with them, they will do this. They, they can't. They can't not do it. So yeah. This is the um, in, in one week, the first week in April, we stopped three evictions. They uh, we went and did a restoration of rights on on a building, and they couldn't do anything uh, in the middle of Monmouth because yeah. the 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 structure that we've done it by. It, many people have tried to stop this system in many different ways, myself included. And what I was doing wrong is that I was not. Uh, countering like with like so here we've got the system of commerce and because nobody likes commerce it's bad it's not lawful we know it's not lawful we know but what we have got is a lot of people believing that legal is lawful so we have to take the legal system and uh, instead of making it true we we take the uh fiction Instead of taking our reality to the fiction, we take bring the fiction to the reality and it just dissolves because now they're standing there saying to us, you can't buy debt, you're the bank. You can't buy and sell debt, but you're a debt recovery company. You better go home. You better shut your doors and go home because by your own declaration, the thing that you've been doing all your lives, you can't do. I've got a beautiful um, email chain from the insolvency uh, about a bankruptcy uh, situation and a recording where I spoke to her and it, I just said, what do you think you're doing? You're terrorising these people and you haven't got an authority. Where is your assignment of consent and authority to act in any matter? Because you've only got the jurisdiction of non-matter, of fiction, and they've been peacefully surrendered back to you. These legal fictions, we've given you them back. So a way to do this is take the birth certificate, go to the police station, say, I've come to report myself uh well i've come to make a, a report of fraud a who well i think it's me that's been committing fraud who we've been committing fraud against i don't know it might be you it might be myself it might be god it might be crown corporation because i've been using this and it's the best type of it well what do you mean that's got crown copyright on it it's not mine <laughs> and so i've if i throw it in the bin i could be destroying property it's not mine so i'm giving it peacefully surrendering it to you now what have you done peacefully surrendered the title what's happened to the equity you've now got a piece of paper that says you haven't got any papers their love book says on this day a man a woman this high this big and so don't let them mute uh, on this day the name of the birth certificate walked in here and and piece and gave me the piece of paper back no it's you can no longer associate this thing that I am with that legal fiction. You made a mistake once and I've been making that same mistake all my life. And now I've stopped making that mistake. And now if you try to force me, now I know what it is that you wanted me to do. You're actually coercing me to commit fraud. At that point there, I have to arrest you. Because I'm obliged to uphold the law and you are just standing there and trying to coerce me or force me to break in it by claiming something that is not mine. So we, when we're talking about settling the ledger books, when people get their minds back to, I've only got the right of use of something, and look what we've got the right of use of, it, we have to use it right. And we've been using it wrong by giving it away to make as much money as we can for some rainy day that may or may not happen. That, well, that's why we've got insurance. We've already got insurance. So I've got my community who are actually provide the insurance 
uh, it's not the insurance company, is it, that's going to give me hospital treatment or I fix my car. It's the people in my community. So why don't I just go direct to my community and say, hey, guys, uh, I, this is what I can give you in five hours. I can discharge all of your liabilities, create a tax haven for your business, and, uh, and you can become a secure party creditor of the corporate state that's been persecuting you for profit. What, what, I, and, and in doing that, that releases all of your time, would you like to contribute five hours as an exchange into the community so that um, uh, you can stand surety to the next person and help somebody else learn this? And How do you it, still have a bank account and stuff in your name if you're retired from that name? So, well, it's, it, well, there's a document and it's called a release of commercial instrument. So while, like we said before, uh, there is this transition period where people are getting their minds into this place where actually, what else can I do with that? You, um, as far as having a bank account goes at the moment, it, it's, you're only gonna have the facility like that for a short period of time now anyway, because it's all gonna go into a chip as you all know. So we've got a period of time, I don't know how long that is to get our heads around the rocks because when the lights go off and they don't come back on again because it's all down to whether your chip's got credit on it or not, then if we haven't done what we need to be doing, which is things like this and interacting with one another, yeah. um, then you know people are gonna be, they're gonna be eating each other because they don't understand how they can support themselves in a very simple way so um as far as a bank account goes the you have it you have the right of use of it with all the rights reserved so if i want to go and let's say uh, make a claim against somebody mm. um the you have a release of commercial instrument if people have been using these to go with through passport control with so I, i'm under duress i'm the i've got a been granted the right of use with all of the liabilities reserved over there that my liability holds from the minister I'm a ben. I'm using this for the piece of worthless document now that it is you can't uh, create joinder or imply any charges of mine because this document clearly explains that it's for one of instantaneous use passing through the ports on such and such a day, based on the evidence that you've provided, that you've got shown due diligence, tried to get uh, all of, any other documentation using the life on record or whatever, you haven't just gone out, I need a passport. And that I'm doing this under duress to, and after one minute, one hour, six hours, whatever it is that you decide, the legal instrument ceases to be uh, a bit a able to be utilised after that point. You know, you haven't got the right of use of it. There's no point in them trying to exercise the right of use of it because all of the equity oh, went back because you stopped using it. You, you, you set a time frame. I'm going to be the legal fiction with all my rights reserved to move from point A to point B for the convenience of not arresting the people who are trying to stop me doing that, uh, which really we should be doing, but anyway. Um, that's another, another layer. So you can, what I'm saying is that you can use it with all your rights reserved with a release of commercial instrument document. All rights reserved? Yeah, so you're reserving all of your rights. It's like people getting benefits. You know, the, the Mercantile Law Amendment 5 says that all accounts are to be passed to the party standing surety. But the government wrote this, Crown Corporation, HM government wrote that legislation. We're saying to them, right, the, using that phrase, in your definition, all of those accounts could be passed to the Pakistani surety, which is these people themselves as universal law. Now, uh, they're not obviously going to pass that across because that, uh, they, they would have to acknowledge that there is another structure that their, their once creditors have now abandoned their ship and created their own vessels. So they're not going to pass those accounts across. They're not. And it would be in a currency that we wouldn't be able to recognise anyway. So we've done it for them in our own currency equivalent kind of credits. It's only the people who are getting paid still in slave tokens that are using bank accounts that are keeping the system alive. Otherwise it'd be completely finished. So what do we do about that? What, what is it we can do? So 
why do I use a bank account? Well, I use a bank account because it's convenient to pay my bills. Ding, they're gone. Now, why do you need a bank account? Well, I need a bank account to buy something online. You don't need a bank account, do you? You've got kind of credits. What do I do at that point? I take cash back again. And then not only do I take cash, I 